you've got to ask yourself one question. Do I feel lucky? Well, to you, punk, get off my lawn. All right, I'll stop with those bad Clint Eastwood impressions already. Anyway, what is up, everybody? Random, random man here. And judging by this ridiculous hat I'm currently wearing, it is Christmas time. Yes, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays for whatever you all are celebrating during this time of year. Specifically for today, actually, Happy Christmas Eve. Now, as I've said in my previous three reviews for Mary Poppins Returns, Aquaman, and Bumblebee, I've made it a tradition for the past four years now to review a movie on or around Christmas while wearing this big itchy hat. Well, for the fourth review in a row and the last time this year, I am keeping that tradition up as I am here bringing you my review for The Mule. Based on the New York Times article, The Sinaloa Cartel's 90-Year-Old Drug Mule by Sam Dolnick, the plot of this crime film basically follows an elderly war veteran, played by Clint Eastwood, who becomes a drug dealer and courier for a Mexican cartel. Going into this movie, I had quite a bit of interest to see it, mainly for the film's director, producer, and star, Clint Eastwood. What is there to say about this guy that hasn't been said already? He is an on-screen film legend, having portrayed famous characters such as The Man With No Name in the Dollars Trilogy and Dirty Harry in his own film franchise. Behind the camera, he's also proven to be quite a prolific director, as for his movies Unforgiven and Million Dollar Baby, he won both the Best Director and Best Picture Oscars for those films, and even scored a Best Actor nomination for each of those movies as well. So this guy is simply a legend in the realm of Hollywood. And for The Mule specifically, this is based on an interesting true story. This is the first time Eastwood has acted in a movie since 2012's The Trouble with the Curve, and it's also the first time he has directed himself since 2008's Gran Torino. So mixing the fact that I thought the concept for this movie was intriguing and the suspenseful first trailer that came out for it, I was hooked. Starting out with the cast and their performances, we of course have Clint Eastwood in the lead role of this elderly war veteran who becomes a drug mule for a Mexican cartel. This kind of role Eastwood has played before. He is a grizzled old man. He has experienced quite a bit in his life. And specifically in this movie, he's a horticulturalist, which means he works with plants. But sadly, his business is getting beat out by other ones across the internet. So. He has fallen onto hard times financially. Eastwood can play this role in his sleep. Ten years ago, he did that with Gran Torino to a much more intense effect, where he is clearly one you don't want to mess with. And here, he kind of does the opposite in that he is taking orders from these uh, Mexican cartel members to basically deliver a bunch of drops to and from their designated locations. So... That makes it quite a bit of an interesting twist with what Eastwood has done in the past. And basically, it goes without saying also that Eastwood is terrific in these kinds of roles. The rest of the supporting cast here include the likes of Bradley Cooper, Michael Benya, and Lawrence Fishburne, all of whom play members of the DEA trying to bust Eastwood's character, although they don't know who he is throughout the majority of the film. And while I thought they were good for the screen time that they had, ultimately I found them to be wasted in that they really didn't have that much to do. Eastwood really went hard on casting a lot of really prolific actors such as them in these roles, but again, they didn't have that much to do other than the rudimentary roles that just about any other actor could have filled for each one of them. The writing of this film by Nick Shank does bring up, again, this movie having an interesting concept. And as this movie begins, we do see Eastwood going on his daily routine of being this horticulturalist, tending for plants, but also in that he has not been that good of a family man. He's apparently been a bad husband to his ex-wife, played by Diane Weist. He's apparently been a bad father to his daughter, played by his real-life daughter, Allison Eastwood, 
and he's apparently been a bad grandfather to his granddaughter, played by Taysa Farmiga. And I think all three of these actresses do fine jobs in their roles as well, but just like the actors who played the DEA agents here, they really didn't have that much to do, and I didn't really care that much about their side of the story, mainly because it didn't get that much development. As I mentioned before too, Eastwood's character has fallen into financial trouble, and him becoming this drug mule for a Mexican cartel kind of came conveniently early on in the movie. But when that element of the story did kick off, it did get into some of the more riveting aspects of this movie in him driving from point A to point B without getting caught with all of the cargo he is carrying. And this is where the movie does feel like one of those easygoing dramas that we would have seen come out decades ago. This is something that is definitely up Clint Eastwood's wheelhouse here, and this applies for both him in front of the camera and behind the camera. As directing-wise, I thought he did a solid job with uh, focusing the scenes where he is driving from one location to another and delivering all this cargo for these Mexican drug dealers. And also in some of the more dramatic scenes though, like I said, I didn't feel like they had that much emotional heft. I thought that they were well acted. Speaking of that lack of heft, not only did I not feel that much weight within the dramatic situations involving Eastwood's character and his family, but also when the story did go on, I pretty much know where it went in terms of what would happen with Eastwood's character. And that right there made it lack some depth and made it feel empty all the while. It's not like I was bored while watching this movie necessarily, as it did keep my interest for the most part, but as the narrative went on, it felt almost over long, even though this movie wasn't even a lengthy one. It was just short of two hours. And at times, it did feel sluggish, where it was just us seeing Eastwood's character drive from one location to another, or just deal with the few sequences where he is with his family. And even the side plot involving the DEA trying to bust Eastwood's character it felt pretty standard. And also with them trying to elicit the help of this uh, snitch who is involved with the cartel that Eastwood's character is working for, I didn't think that went anywhere really, even though that was supposed to add some more dramatic tension. Those tense moments do pop up here and there though, like when Eastwood's character would stop and he has to deal with law enforcement or other characters who are simply in his way. Yeah, that right there did create some moments of intensity, even if they weren't that prevalent across the rest of the movie. To compare this movie to something else like The Old Man and the Gun from earlier this year, starring Robert Redford, which is another movie about an elderly criminal based on a newspaper article, I found that movie far more interesting, and I do think it's a vastly superior movie in it being more concise and it being a more soulful movie from its direction and just the rest of the feel while I was watching it. And with The Mule, it's definitely a more serious movie than that, but like I've said, it didn't have that much of an emotional weight. That all being said though, this is by no means a bad movie. Like I said, I was mostly entertained while watching it. I think it's well shot, well edited, and the direction by Clint Eastwood I thought did fit the bill for this film. It just felt like a story that could have been better in quite a few areas, especially considering that Eastwood has directed some better movies in the past. This is actually his second movie he's directed this year, and earlier this year, his previous film that he did behind the camera was The 1517 of Paris, which I heard was pretty shitty, and The Mule did get better reviews than that, so that's one thing for this film. Fans of old school Clint Eastwood will find some enjoyment to be had with this film. As for me, if you want me to compare it to Eastwood's past movies and you want me to be generous by only mentioning his 21st century films, I would say I liked American Sniper more than this. Gran Torino I think is a superior movie as well. That did have some dramatic weight to it while being a more personal story. And if you really want me to mention a movie of his with dramatic heft as well, Million Dollar Baby, I think, is one of the greatest modern sports movies out there. For all that I have said and more, I cautiously recommend The Mule. My final verdict for The Mule is three.
out of five stars. Thank you all, as always, for watching. Once again, Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays to whatever you all are celebrating during this time of year. Be sure to like this video, comment on what you thought of the mule, social media links in the description, subscribe to my channel for more, and I'll catch you on the next movie review.